I always say he found time mm. when none of us remembers him being a father in the house because really it was too dangerous to be around him. One thing, even now after independence, wherever my father went, I don't know, he just attracted crowds. Ah, Gomo is there wherever. If he can stop immediately, and then he will address people. And he wasn't the person who wanted to be protected by bodyguards. He just says, let everybody come. You know, and uh, I don't know, every, the people had that feeling of being a friend of him, you know, they, they were. So he did he, to protect the family, he wasn't coming in, in to live with us in the house. He would sometimes stop there, but the one time when he stopped at Penandaba, we were tear gassed and we were sick, you know, we had to go and live elsewhere for a few weeks because the, the whole house was unlivable. How so old, sometimes sorry, how old were you then? I was 10. Okay. Yeah. So, what happened is that we would be taken to various places where he is. But the amazing thing, even today, which I think is right, that I still don't understand, we will see him as his children, but there will be people, you know, and there were photos and all this and that and that. So we didn't really know him as children. What we knew is what our mother told us about him. It was, you know, that he, the work he's doing is not just a profession. I mean, this is like a calling. Sent to do this, and you know, we have also Christians, you know, about the Egyptians, Joshua, you know, God can intervene and actually pick people to fill the people. So, my mother called it a calling, and that you know, it was much higher responsibility than him coming to be a father. And we sort of just uh, also accepted it. So, the way you know, we had this positive image, but we didn't really know him, he was a mystical figure to us because everybody was calling him father of the nation. We don't understand his father, his father, everybody. And you're a child, you know, you just kind of make your own fantasies what you want to make of it. All we know is that he was always in the plane to the extent that when the plane flew, he would call him Baba, Baba, and anything. <laughs> and uh, that's what he thought. Uh, but the way we came to know him, know him was mostly when he was in Bonabuzingo. He would ask us to send our homework. All school work, you know, we would do, and then my mother would uh, send to him, and uh, maybe it's marked by the teacher, and he would make his comments and then mark. And then uh, he, he, he always told us education, we want you to be educated, because what we are doing now, you know, to free the country. When the country is free, it's now your turn, people, to come in and prosper and develop the country. So you need that, you need that age. To the extent that after I, I, I graduated in New York, I did international affairs, and I was working for the UN in the, after independence, just before the ground started. I was already in the country because we said, no, not until people cannot do that. We need you all educated young people. That's, how, that's the kind of belief we had in this country. So we knew him because of our, the, the writing, of the homework, and uh, what he was telling us of the education. I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to the house.